Greybeard Gaming presents the Catfish Corner. I'm your host, Catfish, and today we're going to be reviewing, discussing, talking about, recapping the latest episode of The Walking Dead, which was the mid-season finale of Season 6, is Episode 8. Um, great episode. I loved it. A uh, lot of cliffhangers. Uh, I was hoping a lot more would be resolved, but it was not. So uh, let's get right into it. The episode was directed by Michael Satriamis, and he's been the cinematographer on The Walking Dead for over 28 episodes. Um, he directed such episodes as The Grove, which was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I knew it was going to be a, a really beautiful episode coming from a cinematographer. The episode was written by Matt Negrete, and uh, Matt Negrete has uh, been a writer for The Walking Dead for a while now. Uh, He's written such episodes as Slab Town, Consumed, Indifference, uh, several more. Um, the opening shot of the episode, of course, is... I thought it was going to be the tower falling, but it's a hallway, and it's Sam, and he's playing in his room, and Tiny Tim's through the tulips. Tiptoe through the tulips in the metro. So Sam's playing in his room, and it was really cool. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people picked up on it. I saw it right away. He is drawing a picture of himself tied to a tree and zombies coming after him. Just like Carol told him last season about uh, the cookies. You'll get lots and lots of cookies, and you'll be tied to a tree, and, and the monsters will come, and, and no one will ever know what happened to you. Well, that really affected Sam because he's still uh, thinking about that. The toy Sam was playing with... Uh, actually are from Invincible, uh, another Robert Kirkman comic book, so that was a nice little tip of the cap to that. All right, so the tower falls, everybody's scattering. Um, Greg Nicotero even said uh, with the dust cloud that comes up, they're kind of going for a classic horror John Carpenter, the fog type thing, and that's exactly what it looked like. Uh, you didn't know how many zombies were coming through, but they just kept coming and coming through that dust uh, fog cloud, and you couldn't tell... Uh, there were some really cool zombies, too many to name. One I'll mention uh, is my favorite zombie of the episode. It had his jaw detached and just hanging there, and it was it was awesome. Just really cool zombie, and they showed that zombie off. I think they showed it uh, three or four times throughout the episode, in fact. Rick's like, get back, get to your houses, and he starts capping some zombies. Well, here comes Deanna to help him because she doesn't want Rick to die because she knows Rick has to go on to lead this place. And she's helping Rick blast some zombies, shoots one under the chin, and she falls back onto a saw blade, like a, one of those flat saws that you put wood on. So she falls under the saw blade, and Rick grabs her, and you know he's holding her as they, as they walk down the streets of Alexandria, trying to get to safety. So Tara and Rosito run up and help Tobin. Tobin's got a, a wound on his head that I'm not sure exactly how he got it. Uh, and that's the last time we see Tobin. We don't see Francine. We don't see Olivia. We do not see Heath. We do not see Spencer this entire episode. Um, it was more of the, the Rick's group uh, episode. And I'm sure the season premiere on Valentine's Day, we'll find out what those other characters are up to. So Carol and Morgan are, are together and they're running to shelter. And Carol falls. And she uh, acts like she got concussion. Morgan takes her into the, the house. And he sits her down and he's telling her just, it's okay, relax. You might have a concussion, you just need to sit there. So Maggie is right there in the corner of uh, the fence and she falls down. She's capping zombies in the head and one in the shoulder that fell down. Some real cool looking zombies. She climbs a ladder and uh, she's trying to get to kind of a scaffolding or a, uh, a lookout tower, but not really a tower, just a lookout on Alexandria. And... Uh, the zombies knock over the ladder. She's swinging there. I'm like, holy shit, are they going to kill pregnant Maggie? No fucking way. And uh, she ends up pulling herself up. But it, it was it was an intense scene. I mean, it was it balls to the wall right there. Uh, Maggie Green almost dying, escaping the zombies, hanging off. Lauren Cohen is a badass. She was looked like she was actually hanging there, which which is which is hard to do. It takes some athletic ability. And Lauren Cohen did such a, a tremendous job in that scene when she's hanging. I mean, she looked so scared and terrified. Uh, a a a plus thumbs up to uh, Maggie Green, aka Lauren Cohen, for uh, for just and that's all we get of Maggie is just that tiny little scene. But she nailed it. She looks so scared. As Maggie's laying there, once she gets up to the top, she looks up and there's a shot of a POV shot of the green balloons floating through the air. So it was kind of it was kind of cool. She got up there, still saw the green balloons. All right, Eugene is backed up 
to a wall and zombies are coming at him and he sees a radio on the ground and it's Daryl saying, Rick, Rick, come in, Rick, you there? And it's from the episode, the Daryl, Abe, and Sasha episode where you hear help at the end. Well, it's Eugene that picks up the radio, help! And that's who it was that Daryl, Abe, and Sasha heard. And he's about to get bit by a zombie, and then boom, 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 it's Tara and Rosita to save him. They run into a garage and slam the door. Uh, the door that goes into the house is locked, so they're just sitting there in the garage watching the zombies come. So Rick's helping Deanna down the street. Here comes Ron and Carl running up. Here comes Michonne. Here comes Father Gabriel, all helping out. And all of a sudden, they're surrounded by zombies. Then bam, 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 bam. It's Jesse Anderson to save the day. She's like, I got Judith, come on. So they all run into the Anderson home. So zombies just keep filling the streets of Alexandria. Uh, it's an overhead shot right before a commercial break, and it looks like thousands of zombies are already in there. It was, it was pretty awesome. I know a lot of them were actually people dressed up, and then, of course, some doubled CG in the, in the deep background. Uh, most zombies we've ever seen on The Walking Dead, bar none, uh, this season. I know, I know I'm not exactly sure this episode, but, you know, the premiere had a shitload. So Glenn and Enid are outside looking at the tower fall, and all the zombies rush in. Glenn says, well, the tower fell on the west wall. That's where they'll all be flooding into. We can get in on the east wall. That's how we get in. Enid's sitting there. She's like, this is what always happens. Still being the Debbie Downer. And Glenn's like, no. Pretty much tells her, Maggie's pregnant. We're going to go save her. And, you know, Enid wakes up. is like, oh, my God, Maggie's pregnant. Okay, I'll, I'll help you. And that's the last we see of Enid and Glenn until later in the episode, they're climbing a fence. And he's on the opposite side of where Maggie is. He can see Maggie. He's on the opposite side of where Maggie is, and he can see Maggie laying there surrounded by zombies. So, uh, you know, Glenn automatically is terrified. Stephen Yeun did an excellent job acting as he has this entire season. Uh, what, what, what a journey Glenn's been on, and Stephen Yeun, how, how, how great he's got at acting over the, the, the past six seasons. Tiptoe through the tulips, through the metal, Sam's still sitting there listening to Tiny Tim's tiptoe through the tulips, and uh, all of a sudden here's the chaos of Rick and all of them coming in. They run in there, they're holding Deanna, everybody's screaming. Sam's just like, oh, the monster's coming, and Jesse's got to be like, you got to pretend, Sam, pretend uh, you're safe and all this, and Sam kind of calms down, goes back into his room. Sam's got the greasiest hair, the kid hadn't even showered in a while. Sam goes into the Save Him Private Ryan like, Coo. You know, it's all like slowed down and slow motion and all the noise is kind of drowned out a little bit. Uh, which the show has been a big fan of this season. I, this is probably the sixth time they've done that with different characters. Uh, maybe not that many, but... Carol's sitting there with the boo boo on her head and Morgan's trying to tend to her and tells her, Whatever we have to settle, it can wait. Alright, we go down to the... Uh, where the wolf is being kept, and Dr. C is sitting there with them, and they're waiting on Morgan to get back. And Benedict Samuel, who is playing this wolf, is amazing in this episode, uh, performance of the episode by Benedict Samuel. He was so creepy and so evil. He nailed this role. Um, Dr. C's wondering when Morgan's going to get back, and he starts, you know, getting into her head. So the wolf raises his shirt to reveal his cut, his injury, to Dr. C., and tells her breaking into a car and scraped itself on a rusty bumper. So, you know, that's how it got infected. And all this, all the stuff this guy's done, and that's how it gets injured. It's pretty awesome. So, Dr. C ends up, uh, she goes ahead and treats the wolf. Michonne's trying to help Deanna out, uh, and they look at the, the wound which, from the saw blade she fell on, and it's revealed that she also has been bitten. And Deanna pretty much says, Well, shit. And that, that, that's. All you can say, uh, uh, Tova felt you great performance this episode. Uh, I want to say it's a tie with Benedict Samuel for performance of the episode. So Rick and Jesse have a little convo at, at the window. She kind of puts her hand on Rick's face. A little touching moment they have there. A little bonding between the two. Um, Rick kind of talks about some way he might be able to get out there after the herd thins out a little bit and uh, try to lead them away. Oh. Carl and Ron go into the garage, and Ron locks the door and pulls a gun, gets ready to pull a gun on Carl. Well, 
the Grimes instinct kicks in and Carl slams him up against the wall. And they have a good little fight between these two teenagers and Ron gets a shovel and starts attacking Carl. Uh, he hits the glass out of the garage. Well, here come the zombies. Both of them kind of stop fighting for a minute and try to barricade the door. Uh, it says Ron locked the door. Rick and Jesse and them cannot get in there. Rick starts hitting uh, the door with his hatchet, the lock on the door, and saves uh, Ron and Carl. They come in there, and Jesse's like, were you fighting? What happened? They're like, no, we were fighting to uh, stop the zombies. And, you know, Carl totally covers for Ron here. And it's like, what is, what is he doing, you know? Uh, all right, Carl and Ron go upstairs to get some furniture to do some more barricading. And Ron starts to apologize, and Carl pulls a gun on him. He's like, give me your gun now. I know, Ron, give me your gun. Ron hands over the gun. Carl puts it away. He's like, yes, my dad killed your dad, but your dad was an asshole. Which I thought was kind of a dick move. Carl's been very arrogant. He's getting like his dad, and he's the most arrogant person there is. But, I mean, he backs it up. Uh, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see where this little tiff goes. And Rick goes upstairs to check on Deanna, and she's gone. So he walks into the room baby Judith is being kept in, and he sees Deanna leaned over. And for a moment, it's like, oh, my God, is zombie Deanna eating baby Judith? And she's not. She uh, tells Rick, I'm still me. I uh, thought I could get in here, but my legs said no, and she had collapsed. And... So Rick says, somebody's got to be with you, and it can't be her, Judith. And Deanna's just like, yep. Yeah. So they get Michonne to go in there with Deanna. Michonne talk, starts talking about the plans with Deanna, how it can work. And Deanna's like, still? Because all these zombies have come in. Michonne's like, yes. And she's like, what was the Latin? The Latin on the plans translate to someday this pain will be useful to you. And it was kind of like Riggie's motto that he had going, something he always said. And uh, Deanna's on the deathbed, and she kind of says, you know, She's happy with her life, what she did, and uh, she kind of has this really moment with Michonne. It's really sad. She wants Michonne to do what you want. What do you want? Michonne's like, I want this place to be what it can be. And she's like, no, specifically, what do you want, Michonne? So Michonne's going to, we're going to find out in the, the next eight episodes, something something with Michonne, what she really wants, and uh, I'm sure it's somebody else, and what, could it be uh Rick? Could she go for Rick? Morgan? Who knows? We'll find out. Tara, Rosita, and Eugene are sitting in this garage, and Rosita has just given up. She's just like, we're not getting out of this one. Thinking about all the, the terrible times they've gone through, and this is the worst. Well, Tara keeps spirits up high, and they're like, okay, eventually, let's try to get inside. The door's locked. Rosita's going to shoot the knob off, and Tara's like, no, no, we got need to save the bullets. Well, Eugene gets, uh, was like, Lock picking is in my skill set. Because Eugene is, I guess Barry Burt from Resident Evil gave Eugene this lock pick and was like, here you go, Eugene, since you, the master of unlocking, take this with you. So Eugene's got the lock pit, which is in his skill set, goes and starts to unlock the door. Carol, this whole time, has been playing possum with Morgan. Morgan takes a peek downstairs, hears the lights turn off, and Carol is gone. Morgan rushes downstairs. Carol's already there. She has her knife pulled. She's getting ready to kill, kill the wolf. She's like, do not make me kill you to, to get to kill him so other people will not die. And Carol is, uh, she's really emotional at this moment because she, she doesn't want to kill uh, Morgan, but she will to get to kill this wolf. You know, she will kill Morgan to get through to the wolf. Um, well, they, Morgan's like, no, I'm not going to let you. They have a fight, and it's like, oh, man, Carol's holding her own. You know, it's a woman versus a man, and a uh, Morgan ends up picking her up and body slamming her to knock her out. At the moment he does this, the wolf takes Morgan's staff and hits him in the head, knocking him out. He then grabs Dr. C, takes her as hostage. At this moment, Tara, Eugene, and Rosita walk through the door because the garage they were in happened to be the same house all this was going on with Morgan, Carol, Dr. C, and the wolf. They have a little Mexican standoff there for a minute with the wolf has a knife to Denise's throat. They surrender their weapons to the wolf, which is the dumbest shit ever. I mean, all of them are headshot masters, even Eugene when he was saving Tara last season. And they just slide the gun to the wolf. They could easily have pegged this guy in the head. He would drop the knife. Dr. C would have been fine. But uh, now the wolf, he escapes with Dr. C. Uh, Dr. C's wondering where exactly is he going to go with this herd in the middle of Alexandria. And it'll be very interesting to see where that story arc goes, because that is completely different from anything from the source material.
With all the zombies rushing into the Anderson house, uh, Rick and Michonne grab two zombies, start cutting them up. They're going to do the guts trick, like the second episode from season one that Rick and Glenn did. And so they start covering bed sheets with all the guts. Jesse has to talk to Sam. He's like, this is going to happen. You need to pretend. So Gabriel tells Rick, he's like, no matter what happens, I will be there. No matter what. And Rick says, I know. So they come to terms because Gabriel kind of helped save Rick and Carl and Ron when they're all running for Jesse shot all the zombies before they got to Anderson's house. The Anderson's house. Um, so they all are lined up holding hands. Uh, I think it's Michonne, Gabriel, Rick, Carl. They put baby Judith under Carl's little poncho. Uh, then I think it's Jesse, then Sam, then Ron. And I know the source material in the comics, so here's a spoiler warning. All right, it's coming. We all know what happens if we've read the comic coming up. Well, they just cut the episode right off there and fade to black. This is big time viewer bait for the premiere, especially uh, people who haven't, especially for people who don't know what happens immediately after here. And uh, maybe they'll go out and read the comic book because they can't wait and they'll be like, oh my God. And they're trying to break a record with viewers for the, the, the mid-season premiere uh, on Valentine's Day, no doubt. Well, I'll get to my predictions of what will happen here in a minute. But uh, that's how the episode ended. All of them covered in guts. They start walking down. There's zombies everywhere. And then little Sam, Mom? Mom? Is that saving private? Ooh, Mom? Mom? Of course, Sam starts asking his mother a question in the most inappropriate time. I mean, he's put everyone's life at risk. This kid is going to get everyone killed. It's time for Catfish's top five favorites of the latest episode of The Walking Dead, which was the mid-season finale. Ah! My favorite zombie of the episode had to be the detached jaw zombie. They showed it a handful of times. This thing was awesome. Reminded me a little bit of Dr. Tongue from uh, Day of the Dead, a uh, Savini and Nicotero zombie they had done back in the day. Uh, the jaw was just hanging off there, just... Ooh, it, it was gross. It was really cool. I loved it. Definitely my favorite zombie of the episode. There were so many other zombies, as an honorable mention. Um, all of them looked great. The skinniest of actors, that bone structure they have, they, they find some really good uh, zombies for close-ups on The Walking Dead. Uh, so many zombies. Uh, if you're a zombie fan, watch this episode. A lot of great makeup by K&B. Uh, I really enjoyed the zombies. Of course, look at me. <laughs> My favorite special effect of the episode had to be when Michonne and Rick grabbed the two zombies, started cutting them up, taking the guts out. I love that kind of gore and practical effects, obviously. And it was awesome. The, the, the katana, they had an overhead shot, the katana going into the torso of the one zombie, and then they just start pulling out the guts and throwing it on the, the, the bed sheets. Phenomenal looking guts. Phenomenal. It, uh, the color was perfect. It was so gross. I can't imagine what that would smell like in real life. Ugh. I, I would be throwing up all over the place. I really would. I uh, just think the smell of a... I mean, garbage smells bad enough, so a rotten corpse? Oh my god. <laughs> my favorite scene of the episode was the post credit scene where Daryl, Abe, and Sasha ran into the saviors on the road. I'm a Negan fanboy, so this was fucking awesome to me. They're sitting there. Uh, there's like, I don't know, six to eight of them on motorcycles. And I don't know why Daryl, Abe, and Sasha stop. And they don't even get out of the car with their weapons. Uh, the guy's like, get out. All right, now, everything you got belongs to us. And I'm like, what? He's like, let me put it this way. Your weapons... Uh, those mints, if you got them, if you got porno underneath your seats, if you got little tissues in your glove box, none of it's yours anymore. And Sasha's like, oh yeah, well whose is it? And the guy takes a step forward into the camera is like, all your property now belongs to Negan. Woo, there's the name drop. Woo, Negan's coming, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm so happy. What an awesome scene. What a great tease. Uh, you producer Scott Gimple, you got us again. My favorite line of the episode, being the Negan fanboy I am, was of course the after credit scene with the Savior saying, all your property now belongs to Negan. Awesome. Loved it. Can't wait. You producers of The Walking Dead, nice little tease. You got me. 
Best performance of the episode, it's a tie between Tova Felchu, who plays Deanna, and uh, Benedict Samuel, who played the wolf. Uh, both of them had marvelous performances. Um, Deanna, she was a great character that changed uh, the sex of the character from the source material. And this episode, she, she almost made me cry when she was talking to Michonne that time. And, you know, she knew she was going to die. And you think she's going to kill herself. Then she gets up and starts blasting zombies. And then just screams out of, ah! and it's just, like, I guess she gets ripped apart. We never actually get to see her on-screen death. <laughs> a fly just flew up to me. How, how awesome is that in the makeup? Uh, we never get to really see Deanna's on-screen death. She just yells, and she died. She was on uh, Talking Dead. She was in the memoriam, so uh, Deanna's definitely dead. All right, my predictions for Episode 9 and the rest of the season when they come back on Valentine's Day. How appropriate. Um, well, they'll come back. Uh, I, I imagine it'll be the exact same scene with Rick and everyone uh, in their gut ponchos walking through Alexandria. Sam's going to start saying mom. Here comes a big spoiler alert. All these predictions are going to have spoilers from uh, the comic book because that's going to help me predict. Um, Sam will start saying mom. He'll start getting devoured by zombies. Jesse won't let him go. She's holding on to Carl and baby Judith. Rick's going to be like, let her go, let him go. Jesse's going to start getting eaten by zombies. Rick's going to take that hatchet, chop her arm off to free Carl. Ron's going to see this, try to shoot Rick. Carl will get in the way, get blasted in the face. Michonne's going to take her katana, kill uh, Ron right away, maybe chop his head off. And uh, who knows what Gabriel's going to be doing during this time. Uh, I assume baby Judith will fall with Carl. Uh, probably Michonne will grab baby Judith as Rick tries to find Dr. C, who was with them in the comic book, but now with the wolf being uh, having her as a hostage, who knows how that's going to play out. Maybe Rick and them will run into the wolf and Dr. C, and uh, Rick will, or someone will kill the wolf. Maybe the wolf will come around. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the wolf, because I really like the actor, really like the character. Uh, it'd be cool if he came around and actually became one of the group, but this son of a bitch is so evil. That, I don't believe that will happen. It'll be a nice twist if it does, but... Uh, uh, he, he's, he's a twisted psycho. Uh, he really is. Also in episode 9, uh, Glenn will rescue Maggie. Uh, I presume it to be a 90-minute episode. Uh, I think a lot will be resolved. Uh, once Carl gets shot, Rick will start going psycho nuts on the zombies, similar as he did when Lori died in uh, season 3. He won't go crazy, though, which has been the low point of the show, in my opinion. It was okay in the source material, but it did not translate to TV whatsoever. Um, so Rick will start going crazy on the zombies everybody will be hiding in the houses and look out and see Rick kicking ass and join in, all the Alexandrians will start helping a lot of people are going to die but they'll eventually kill all the zombies alright, the actor Tom Payne has been cast as Jesus so I predict that in the uh, season, mid-season premiere an after credit scene will have uh, Paul Jesus Monroe looking with his binoculars at Alexandria that would be pretty cool, and then uh, the next several episodes, uh, we'll, we'll get to meet Jesus, hell of a run with some of the characters. Uh, who knows which characters those will be. It'd be really cool if Jesus showed up and helped dispatch Negan's men that Daryl, Abe, and Sasha run into, and then that's how they meet. That would be pretty cool. That could happen. Uh, let me know what you think is going to happen down there in the comment section. Xander Berkeley has been cast as Gregory. We know the Hilltop's coming, thanks to the Spoiling Dead fans and all of their uh, th their spoilers with their pictures and stuff. I want to give a shout-out to the Spoiling Dead fans uh, real quick. They have a website, SpoilingDeadFans.com. They also have a Facebook page. Just look up Spoiling Dead fans. Um, or SpoilingDeadFans.com, excuse me. I'll, I'll put the links in the description. Uh, I think I'm a Walking Dead fan. I mean, these people uh, are trying to get on set taking pictures for us. Uh, Spoilers have never bothered me. Uh, in fact, I think they help me pay attention when I know what's going to happen. Uh, a little bit. I mean, they'll mention what happens, but not really too detailed. So, you might know what's going to happen, but it, it'll play out different than you thought it would. Just, uh, you know, you don't know what camera angles are used and what kind of gore effect there will be. So, it's 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 cool what, what how the uh, characters are acting. You don't know any of those yet, but uh, it helps me pay attention. Anyways, Spoiling Dead fans... They're awesome. I don't think people realize the hard work that uh, they put into providing us all this awesome spoiler info. Uh, if you don't mind spoilers, definitely check them out on the Facebook or their Facebook page and go to their website and sign up. Uh, like I said, I'm going to leave uh, 
Links in the description of this video. So definitely check out the Spoiling Dead fans. They're awesome. Gregory's kind of uh, just a sleaze ball. This guy can play sleaze ball perfectly. Uh, we know the hilltop is coming. Jesus and Gregory have been cast. Here's the big one. Jeffrey Dean Morgan has been cast as Negan, the comedian from The Watchmen. Uh, awesome actor. He is going to nail Negan. They're not going to be able to, to drop F-bombs every other word, but Negan will be awesome. Uh, I predict he will come in the season finale. Now, um, I'm thinking he's going to line everybody up. It's going to play out just like the comic. They're going to do a lot of stuff word for word. He will do the me eeny, meeny, miny, mo. He will pick out Glenn, bring him up, and everybody thinks this is it's going to be like the comic book. Then somebody's going to step up and take his place. I'm guessing it's going to be Morgan. Uh, I hope it's not Abraham. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. Uh, I would rather it be Rick or Daryl. That would be awesome. They're not going to kill off either one of those. They're the cash cows. So it'll probably be Morgan. Negan will kill Morgan. Uh, in the comic book, it's Rick, Carl, Sophia, Heath, Michonne, Glenn, and Maggie. So it'll be uh, cool to see what characters they put there in the lineup instead. Uh, probably, well, it'll be Enid now because she's kind of the uh, adopted daughter of Glenn and Maggie. Um, totally going to fill the Sophia role. Uh, so we got Rick, Carl, Enid, Glenn, Maggie. I don't. Where the fuck has Heath been? Last time we saw Heath, he was looking at his reflection in the water. Um, maybe he'll show up. I doubt he'll be one of the, and it'll probably Morgan will be uh, the, the seventh one with the group. But that would be too obvious who he's going to kill. Uh, I cannot wait for Jeffrey Dean Morgan just smiling and tapping Lucille at people and pointing and talking about this is Lucille. After he hits him, <laughs> Lucille's a vampire bat. I'm just getting started, you bunch of fucking pussies. And, uh, they may be, they may drop an F-bomb. If they, if they don't Drop one when Andrew Lincoln, uh, they're fucking with the wrong people. They made, they're screwing with the wrong people. On the Blu-ray, they made, they're fucking with the wrong people. So, maybe on the Blu-rays they released, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan will be dropping F-bombs every other word. Doubt it, but you never know. They, they film a lot of takes of The Walking Dead, so they could do it one way and then do it with the bad language and put it in the Blu-ray. I'm sure Kirkman and Gimple have really thought about how to put Negan on TV. So I'm so happy he's coming. So thrilled as Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I already did a video about the casting if you want to check that out. It's on our channel, Greybeard Gaming. Um, cannot wait till Valentine's Day to get back so we get some more Walking Dead. This back eight should be the best eight episodes they've ever had. This is some of my favorite moments of the comic book coming up. Uh, comic number 100. And Negan, uh, uh, that's going to be the peak. It was the peak of the comic, still has been. Um, it will be the peak of the show for me. doesn't mean I'm not going to watch anymore. I'm still going to love the show, but nothing can get better than that iconic scene of Negan's first appearance. Um, it's going to be amazing. Uh, it's going to be heartbreaking. Oh, I cannot wait. I wish it was uh, the season finale already. <laughs> so, will Carl and Enid get together? Um, if they're going to go the, the, the route with Comic Sophia, I think it's going to be more of a brother-sister relationship with them, but uh, maybe a romantic... Uh, involvement later on in the series. Uh, I think it's going to be more of a best friend, almost brother-sister relationship at first. And and then they'll blossom. And, and they're going to love each other, just uh, one won't tell the other one that they love them. You know, it's like that scene in the tree where she, good, you're scared of me too, which was awesome. I, I really like Carl to, to get him some. We all know he just got some not that long ago in the comic from Lydia. Well, that's way down the road, ladies and gentlemen. All right, with Deanna asking Michonne, what do you want? And I'm guessing that Michonne wants a relationship. She wants to be loved. Um, it'd be awesome if we get our Michonne, Rick and Michonne relationship. I would be a fan of that. Uh, Michonne would take the place of Andrea and kind of be like Carl's new mom. I really think that could happen, especially because I'm sure Jesse's dying in the, in the mid-season premiere. And Michonne and Morgan hooked up in the comic during this time, but... I don't see that happening. Morgan's uh, too different now. I don't think he would ever be with another woman after his wife. But we'll see. Maybe it could be uh, Michonne and Morgan, and they go on to have uh, a wonderful relationship for the next several seasons. I doubt that's 
that's going to happen. Uh, but that's definitely what Michonne wants is uh, a relationship, I believe anyway. So she's going to go after Rick uh, in the back half and maybe they'll hook up. Okay, after uh, Negan's appearance, where he's going to bash somebody's brains in with his baseball bat named Lucille, it's a Louisville Slugger wrapped in barbed wire, best weapon of all time. Um, after his first appearance, when Rick goes back to the hilltop and tells him, you know, this son of a bitch just showed up and killed one of my guys, one of my best friends, why didn't you tell me he was such a badass, pretty much? Uh, you know, there's always a bigger fish, and... Dick Grimes, uh, Dick Grimes, Rick Grimes, big dick swinging lately. Just everything he's run into, he's cut through like butter, and there's always a bigger fish, and he runs into Negan. So Rick uh, gets put into his place, but he comes back to the hilltop, talks to Jesus, and Jesus says, well, I think it's time that you meet Ezekiel and take you to the kingdom. The kingdom is another community like Alexandria, like the hilltop, that uh, I think it's in an old high school, and Ezekiel, Ezekiel is the leader. He's a black male with long white dreads that go down like his ass. He was a zookeeper and he has a, no shit, a pet tiger named Shiva. Now a lot of people are wondering if they'll even do Ezekiel and the tiger or make it a dog or something like that because uh, it would be very expensive to do a CG tiger. Well I think about K&B, the experts, Greg Nicotero and Howard Bergman, uh, they did the lion in the movie Jumanji which was awesome, looked real. Uh, they're going to build a, a tiger, several tigers, and, and mix it with CG. That'll be awesome. Shiva's going to be in the show. Uh, Shiva is around a little while in the comic book, but then uh, she eventually dies, uh, saving Ezekiel and some others. So she probably won't be around for too long. She dies during the All Out War, which uh, I'm guessing All Out War will be uh, maybe the back half of Season 7. We'll find out. So Jesus will show Rick and everyone the hilltop. When Rick and them first get there, and they're uh, introducing Rick to the leader, Gregory, who's going to be played by Xander Berkeley, um, a man comes up named Ethan. He is going to stab Gregory in the belly. Rick's going to instantly kill this guy in front of everybody. The guy is doing this to Gregory because Negan sent him to do this, or he was going to kill the guy's wife. So... Uh, Rick instantly kills this guy. All the hilltop people are terrified. And Rick's just like, what? As he's covered in blood. I mean, he's down. He's just slit the guy's throat and the blood fall on Rick's face. Should be kind of awesome. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at the G Beard Gaming. Like our Facebook page at the Gray Beard Gaming. Comment, subscribe, thumbs up some of our vids right here on YouTube. Check us out on Twitch. Live streaming right now. Wendell X is live streaming some modded Fallout 4 and supercomputer. Looks freaking awesome. And make sure you keep it tuned right here to Greybeard Gaming for everything that matters. Woo! Tiptoe through the tulips, through the metal.